So uh, dupulumab is basically a monoclonal antibody that is targeting IL-4. And, and it, tar it doesn't target the circulating IL-4, it targets the IL-4 receptor. By targeting the IL-4 receptor, it not only targets IL-4, but it, it also targets IL-13, which is important because both IL-4 and IL-13 are very important in the management of or the creation of um, nasal polyps. If we look at the study, there are several endpoints that we looked at. But the two co-primary endpoints uh, was looking at the change in nasal polyps. Traditionally, you, you would see in these clinical studies looking at nasal polyps, a change of one would be clinically significant. If you look at the change in the nasal polyp for the study, it was incredible it was a change of two. So it's twice of what we would traditionally consider clinically significant. So that was remarkable. Um, the other thing that we measured was a change in nasal congestion. So a lot of these patients came in, they had moderate to severe nasal congestion. By the end of the study, uh, the patients had zero to mild nasal congestion. So they were able to meet the co-primary endpoints um, for the clinical study. And you know, for traditionally for these clinical studies, um, they usually have one primary endpoint. For sinusitis with nasal polyps, they had two. That made it much harder to meet. But yet, we were able to uh, uh, meet those goals and, and see what else um, it could do. The other things that we measured were secondary endpoints. These endpoints were um, something, uh, it's a quality of life questionnaire called SNOT 22. Um, it's kind of appropriate, right? Because it's, it's not <laughs> for the science science patients. Yeah, um, and it's kind of interesting because SNOT 22 is a uh, probably a measure that has been used most often for treatment of sinusitis. So when you have a patient with sinusitis and you have an intervention, like surgery or a medical treatment, um, then you can see if there's a change uh, from baseline to at the end of the clinical trial to see if there's any change. Um, SNOT-22 is probably the one that's been measured the most. Now, it's probably not the best measure for sinusitis because it can also measure other disease processes such as depression, but it is the one that's most commonly used out there. That was one of the secondary endpoints. When you measure the secondary endpoints from baseline to the end of this clinical study, there was a change of 30, which is remarkable because if you look at what the change for um, uh, the SNOT-22 after surgery is pretty similar. So what this is saying is, you know, is the, so the question rises, is the effect of the dupulumab almost similar to what we would see in patients with SNOT-22. And, and based on the change in SNOT-22, that's what it would infer. Now, in order to really compare, you have to compare the two together. But based on the change of SNOT-22, that's what it would infer. There was also, um, we also measured um, change in smell. And you know, these patients with nasal uh, polyposis, there are two symptoms that are probably the most common, nasal congestion and change in smell. If you ask the patient which is more important for them, they would say the change in smell or loss of smell is more important for them. And in this study, we were able to show that the patients now who, who did not have any sense of smell in the beginning were able to get their sense of smell back, which is remarkable because that increases their quality of life tremendously. And so that's what we were able to show with the secondary endpoints.